Welcome to House Training 101. We're going to learn all about having a dog learn to be clean in the house. So we want to have success with them pottying outside, right? Well, we need a few things, a crate, and the size does matter. If it's too big, they will soil in it. Well, that doesn't mean that you have to have multiple size crates as your dog is obviously going to grow. But what it does mean is that you need to find a way to make it smaller. Some crates will come with movable partitions. Some people just put something in there to make the interior of the crate a smaller size. That's important. You want a dog to learn how to be clean. Otherwise, if they start soiling in the crate, they learn to be very dirty. One of the things that I really like to utilize in house training is a litter box. That's right, a litter box for puppies. Puppies under 14 weeks of age don't have the physical capabilities of controlling their bladder. So this is a great option. It also can be a wonderful option for the small dogs living in condos or apartment life. Now I'm not using cat litter in my dog litter box. I am using wood pellets. I get mine from the livestock supply store. This is just livestock bedding. Um, people use it for rabbits as well, um, include, and horses and all other types of livestock. You could probably get it from your pet supply store and if they don't carry it, they're likely able to just order it in. It does come in pellets. So you should cover the box bottom with the litter and then you're going to sprinkle water on it to open those pellets up to make them more absorbable and less appealing for your puppies to grab and chew on. But don't worry, if they're chewing on these, it's just fiber, they'll poop it out the same way that it went in. So if you're going to use a litter box, I would still have newspaper on the floor or something to cover the floor entirely. It just makes cleaning up easier and you'll absorb any accidents that might happen. Make sure you plan your long-term confinement area accordingly. In this setup, you can see that the crate on the right side, the door is opening up to the litter box. It's kind of not a smart setup because it's blocking the access to the litter box and it's taking up space that the dog can't reach in between the litter box and the crate. If you're using the newspaper method, you start by having the entire floor area covered. You're gradually over time going to make that area smaller and smaller. Then you're going to move that paper to the door. And then from the door, you're going to move it outside. And that's how you'll transition your puppy from paper training to pottying outdoors. People often ask about where to put the crate. Well, we'll start with in the long-term confinement area, but keep in mind if you have it in there and your puppy is a bit of a monkey and likes to climb, you might not want to be able to do that. Or if you have the space, put it in the middle so that your puppy can't climb on the crate and then work its way out of the pen. Aside from that, generally in the household, your crate placement is going to depend a lot about your puppy as an individual. Some puppies, they are overstimulated by seeing you and if that's the case and the crate is placed in an area where there's a lot of activity going on, you simply might just have to put a blanket over it. People often ask, should I have the crate in the bedroom? Well, you're going to have to try that out. Is your puppy more quiet and settled when it's not in the bedroom? Or is it more quiet and settled when it is the bedroom? These are things that you'll have to experiment with to figure out. So what exactly is long-term confinement? Well, crates are not for long-term confinement other than overnight. It's not very nice to leave your puppy in a box for long periods of time throughout the day. So a long-term confinement area would be something like this. provides them a clean area to sleep, an area to relieve themselves to go potty as they need to, access to water, and a small play area. It's also important that your puppy has appropriate bedding, and what's appropriate for one puppy may not be appropriate for another. It's also important that your puppy has a cuddle buddy, and that would be a stuffed animal that would be the same size or a little bit bigger as your puppy. This brings them comfort and reminds them of sleeping with their litter mates. 
Whatever you do, make sure that that stuffy doesn't have plastic eyes and things like that that can be removed and choked on. Also, a stuffed Kong. Get your puppy working on the Kong and be sure to see our upcoming Kong video. Let's talk about another item that's out there that's marketed for puppy potty training. That would be the puppy pads. I say save your money. The package says your puppy will be attracted to it. And oh yeah, they're attracted to it all right. Every puppy I've ever known has shredded these. All it does is make more mess. When we finally get to the point where our puppies learn that they should be going outside, we often miss seeing them ask. And a great way to avoid missing their cue to ask to go out is using the bell method. So I just get a bell and I hang it from the door handle and make sure that you're often going in and out of the same door and teach your puppy to ring the bell. You just take them to it every time you're going to go out, lift up their paw, hit the bell a few times, and then open the door and take them outside. They'll start to make that association. However, you got to pay attention to this one. This is so important. Make sure that your dog asking to go out, whether they're doing it verbally or running to the door or ringing the bell, is only to go potty. You don't want them asking you in the middle of the night just to get your attention. You don't want them asking you several times during the day because they're bored or they feel like going outside and running around. The bell must only mean going potty. Them going to the door means they need to go potty. The crying in the crate during the night only is to go potty. It's not to get out. So it's important that we know when they will have to go potty because they're not going to give you a lot of notice sometimes. So when they wake up, they need to go potty. That's a given. When they're done playing and running around, they're going to need to go potty. So don't miss that. That's the most common one that people miss right there. After a certain period of time, they're going to need to go potty. And that period of time will vary from dog to dog. You'll get to know what that period of time is once you get to know your puppy better. And also, when your puppy's sniffing the floor, get ready. Your puppy's also gonna have to go usually within 15 minutes of eating or drinking. And the obvious, first thing in the morning, they gotta go. That's your best chance of success to get them to potty outside. You're going to want to head straight to your puppy's crate so that you can get them outside to potty because they really got to go. When you go to let them out of the crate, you should do so quietly. Be very calm. If you're excitable, you're going to risk them going pee out of excitement and we don't want to do that. And this is also a way to prevent separation anxiety. We don't want to create anxiety when we're approaching the crate. We always want it to be calm and just quietly let them out. Okay, don't make fun of my green rubber boots. I live on a farm and this is the quickest thing for me to slip on. If you want a fashion video, you're on the wrong YouTube channel. Anyhow, get ready. Get your leash on your puppy. Make sure you have treats ready, which I do. I'm gonna reward her because she's sitting very nicely for me. And don't forget about the bell. We wanna make sure that we ring that bell every time we're going to go outside to go potty. So I just pick up her foot and I ring the bell. Now, nobody likes to step in poop on the lawn, and we can avoid this by having just one part of our yard to clean up. How do we do that? Well, we pick a dedicated potty spot, and that will be the spot that you will go to each and every time. So when you get to your dedicated potty spot, don't be tempted 
buy your puppy to walk all over the yard. If your puppy is stretching on the end of the leash to go sniff somewhere else, don't let them take you there. Why? Because one, you're ruining your potty spot, and two, you're teaching your puppy to pull you on the leash. Yes, folks, this is where it all begins. So, your puppy only has the perimeter of the leash around you. Your puppy will get into the habit of soiling just in that area, and then you only have one part of the lawn that is soiled. This is great, and it will make the next 10 to 15 years or longer of having a yard that is safe for kids to run around and play on. So you're going to want to stand still because your movement is going to distract them, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Your dog only has the perimeter of the leash to move around you, and that is the extent of the potty spot. Your dog is also going to be trained to go on cue. So you're going to say, go potty, and that will be your dog's cue to go to the bathroom. That's going to take some time for the association to match, but it will happen if you're consistent with it. Usually the first pottying of the morning goes fairly quickly. The ones throughout the day, not so much. Your puppy's going to be interested in the environment, sniffing around, maybe grabbing a stick or a leaf here or there. That's okay. Don't interrupt them. Don't distract them. You just give your cue once, go potty, and you stand there. Eventually, that area, that small perimeter that the leash permits them around you, is going to become boring and your puppy will figure it out. Be committed, be consistent, be patient, and don't be fidgety. Pay attention to how much my movement affects her focus and distracts her. Obviously, walking is clearly a distraction. We don't want our puppies to learn that they get to explore the yard and walk with us out in the yard when they've asked to go out. We want them to understand pottying is pottying. I give my dog a maximum of about two to three minutes and if they don't potty, I take them back inside and they go back in the crate. I will try them again and the same results. If they go out and if I stand still and they don't potty in the potty spot, they go back in the house. That's how we prevent them from asking to go out for the point of attention, exercise or anything other than pottying. It's important that you're going out with your puppy to go potty. If you have a fenced yard and all you're doing is opening the door and letting them go out there on their own, all that they're learning is that to ask at the door for the purpose of going out, not specifically to ask to go to the bathroom. It's important that you know when to say yes when it comes to pottying. Don't say it at the start or you might interrupt them from doing what they're supposed to be doing. Wait till they're done and then say yes and reward with a treat. So we've had success. What do you do next? Well, you can go back in the house or practice your training. Here I just practiced a recall and a nice sit, which she did beautifully. Um, you could play with your dog or go for a walk. One of the nice things about doing this is when they potty first, you're probably not going to be stuck carrying a dirty poop bag with you. There's one outstanding question, and that is, what do you do if you catch them soiling in the house? Well, let's focus on prevention first. Supervision, supervision, supervision. That is the key to successful potty training for your dog. Aside from that, if your dog is soiling in the house, and if you catch them, do not scold your dog. It is so important. All that you'll teach them is that it's not safe to poop and pee in front of you. And they'll start to get really creative and find a place with less traffic to go and do their business. So don't scold them. What you're going to do is if they're peeing, you could shriek a little and go, ah! That's usually enough to interrupt the flow of pee. And then you can scoop them up, take them out to go to the bathroom in the right area. If they're pooping, don't bother interrupting and don't pick them up or you're going to end up with turds bouncing off your knee as you're walking. Wait for them to finish. Be patient. Clean it up. If you're using a newspaper, roll it up and hit yourself over the head with it because it's your fault. So don't be upset with your puppy. Be upset with yourself for the lack of supervision. 
Supervision is the key to success and knowing what the signs are. Good luck with your potty training. This is Ellie Ross. Thanks for watching.